He's like the Chuck Norris of NASCAR. All right, I'm going to start. Who is? Denny. You think Denny Hamlin is the Chuck Norris of NASCAR? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and with me, as always, is Jamie, and this is Race Car Spell Backwards. Episode 78. Jamie, what's going on, my friend? I got too much sleep last night. Too much sleep. Too much sleep. You never hear anyone complaining about it. I'm complaining about it. I mean, I got yeah, I've never, too much sleep. So on average, how many hours of sleep do you say you get a night? So I probably go to sleep about 11 and get up at 5.30. What's that, six, six and a half hour. hours? Yeah. No, not me. I get eight hours. I'm an eight to nine hours of sleep kind of guy. I, I need eight to nine hours a night. Well, I get eight on the weekends usually. No, I get eight usually. I go to bed and get up at the same time seven days a week. So I'm getting a solid eight hours every night. Not right now, but usually on average. Right now, I'm not getting hardly any sleep because of these stupid cluster headaches, but it is what it is. I had a monkey, ma some monkeys making love in the woods this weekend. Oh, I did yeah. not get any sleep. The dogs were going crazy. I mean, they were just going... <laughs> Yeah. Well, they were two parrots making love. I don't know what the heck was going on, but you know what? Did you know you can record? My children told me this. I did not. You can take a recording and drop it in Google too, just like a photo. What, what do you mean? Like for an email? No, no. You take the recording. Yeah. Drop that sound in Google, and it'll tell you what it's a burr owl. So you recorded the sound, and it's an owl. It's a burr owl. A burr owl. Uh-huh. So you had two. It referenced. Were Alexa two, did it. Alexa were, did it. Were two honest. burr owls having sex in the woods is what you're saying? It's according to Alexa. She actually, Alexa's dangerous. Yeah, I don't have Alexa. Alexa told our TV to turn on and show me a YouTube video of this burr owl making the monkey sex noise. Just one does all that? Yeah. Just, whoop, 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 whoop. Scared you? It did all night. Actually, I went out with a gun. The dogs are freaking out, and I'm like, this has got to stop. So I went outside, and I followed the noise. I got to the edge of the woods, and it got real loud, and I just I ran home like a little bitch. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> At least you own it, though. Hey, you got scared, and you took off. Well, I didn't hide behind a bush and beat a neighbor. Hide behind a bush and beat I didn't hide behind a bush and beat a neighbor either. Well, Matt Crafton supposedly did. Or in the next mama, you did. But that's a, you know, Dude, it kind of. If the, there's a fight, you really don't want your mom defending you. No, God, no. Oh my God. That's that's like third grade stuff. That is high school. I mean, that is exactly. Mommy. Not even high school. That's like middle school. But he's but then he made the biggest mistake. Never tell anyone you're going to effing kill them. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. Because if they're dead the next month or two. It's on you. It's on video. Yeah. And he's going to be so suspect, suspect number, you know, number one. If Crafton has a heart attack in the next month, they're going to they're going to suspect Nick Sanchez. The coroner's going to see if Sanchez poisoned him, and he probably did. Even if you're going to kill him, you should not give any warning. Well, it's just like if you're going to wreck somebody, don't say you're going to wreck them. Just wreck them. Yeah, that's all. That's all we ask. Just wreck them. We don't need. Anything else? But you know what? I'm, there's some controversy. Did he get sucker punched? Did he push him and say, I'm going to effing kill you and craft and hit him back? I don't know. All I know is when you get in a fight at the park, you don't want mama coming to defend you. That's a fact. All so, right, you know, I, I. Well, this is episode 78, Jamie. Who are we dedicating this episode to? You know, I, I had some friends that they actually contacted you. They listen to the show. Yeah. Or watch it at least. Giacomo, Carmine, and Jeff. Uh, so this will be Giacomo, Carmine, and Jeff's episode. So it's for you guys. Thanks for watching. We greatly Forget appreciate it. Get about it. We greatly appreciate you watching. That's a fact. So, well, speaking of Matt Crafton and Nick Sanchez, it, to me, that's a storyline. So I had a conversation with a buddy of mine on Friday, actually Scott from Southwest West South Virginia. Yeah, guy from that part of wherever. 
Yeah, the confusing it's West Virginia, Virginia, West Virginia, or it could be Western Virginia. So we were talking about like the WWE and all these other wrestling, and how yeah, wrestling's not not real. It's fake. It's all scripted. It's but it's one big storyline. People get attached to that storyline. If you look at an arena that has a wrestling event at it, it is one hundred percent sold out, packed to the gills. You can't fit another person in there. And it's because they buy into the storylines. Same with MMA. And that was the point that Scott was making, that MMA wasn't as popular until they had to show the Ultimate Fighter come out, and that created some storylines. And then people had a storyline to attach to. Well, so look at Van Sturpensteimer. F1, Drive to Survive. He's got no personality. Zero. And actually, I don't know that we have an F1 driver, really. That has a whole lot of personality that you knew about prior to Drive to Survive. Drive now, winning to, constantly helps them. Well, Drive to Survive created storylines. The product that F1 puts on the track is absolutely god awfully horrible. There's nothing good about it whatsoever. And people still tune in every week to watch because of a storyline they're following. They're bought into their driver, man. Golf. You're seeing it in golf now. They're building storylines. You did what? they invite ISIS to sponsor them or something? No, it wasn't ISIS. It was um, like the Islamic bro Brotherhood or something. So cousin of yeah. ISIS. Well, yeah, you couldn't be directly attached to the terrorist organization, so they like one step removed, like a Saudi it'd prince or something. It'd be great them. if they like put a bomb in the, someone's golf bag and it was just we didn't know who. It's <laughs> just. As they're walking down to the green, they explode. Kapoo. Oh, it's the random boom. random boom, 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 boom. I don't know if that'd be great, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're a smart enough golfer, you can figure it out. And then all of a sudden the caddy and the golfers start running. Like, why is my bag ticking? <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> tick, tick, tick. I don't even know if they use ticking time. Throw into a high rise. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry, run. <laughs> No, but speaking of storylines, I mean, you see it in football. Look at um, Deion Sanders, Coach What Prime. about old Swifty dating that dude from Kansas City, Taylor Swifty? Who's that? Oh, the singer. Mm, I don't think Yeah, well, see, there's another storyline. That's what I mean. They're Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey something. That's a dude. Yeah, the dude, the football player from Kansas City. That's who she's Twitter paid over this week. There'll be, there'll be a platinum album about them after they break up. Two weeks from now. And then you'll have a storyline. Yeah. But you see it in college football, you see storylines are being created. Yeah, Maryland is 5-0. Did you see that? No. No. Have they played anybody? No. Georgia barely won again. I saw that. I didn't really watch well, it. God forbid Maryland plays Georgia in a hole. Oh, that would be awesome. Not for would be practice for Georgia. It would be awesome for Georgia. Georgia won't. Georgia. You know, Tugaluva's little brother is a quarterback in there. I do. I did know that. Or is it Tugaluga? Tugaluga. Oh, man. Is it Tug or Tuga? Tuga Valuga. That's him. Tuga. His, his brother's name was Tua. Um, one of our listeners, Brian, he can correct us on this because he's a diehard Alabama fan. But I'm sorry, Brian. It's either Tuga, Tuga Maguba, something like that. Tug my Uba? <laughs> Tugging his Uba? <laughs> He's tugging his Uba over there. No, but there's so, a lot of tuggers there on campus. So um, Flow Racing, if you watch Flow Racing on anything, you look, they have all their little movies and shorts on there. Who is this there. lady, Flow? And on the, it's an app. You got to get the app. Ooh. Oh, the progressive chick, no, Flow. Golly, you're killing me, Smiles. Right. But they're building storylines around like Davenport, Jonathan Davenport, and, and all Flo. these other short track drivers. And it makes you want to watch because there's a storyline. Then you have NASCAR. NASCAR hates storylines. NASCAR penalizes their drivers for speaking out. Matter of fact, storylines and personality is almost 100% non-existent within NASCAR now. Because as we know, we even know the script from watching it. My, my two nut Chevy was running real well today. It's really a shame that I didn't win. I like to thank my sponsors, Billy Bob's Barbecue. It's really a shame we couldn't bring it in for him. The car was running great until we got in that wreck, and you know it's all Ty Dillon's fault. I hate that guy. But they would never say that. Menards is awesome. 
Thanks. So and then you got Matt Crafton and Nick Sanchez. So Nick Sanchez and Matt Crafton. I watched the video, the replay. To me, it looks like Sanchez had Crafton's rear end jacked up and he couldn't do anything. You can't drive the car when your wheels aren't on the ground. Oh, I thought you were talking about the actual fight, not the crash. No, the crash. I don't know that. I know Nick Sanchez's team had told him multiple times to chill out. You're, you're, you're in the pushing playoffs, too don't aggressively. make any enemies. That's what they told him. Yeah. So, obviously, he was overdriving the car. It looked to me like he wrecked Matt. Now, Nick's mom says that people are that people in her circle are saying different. So I'm sure. Yeah, but you know, my friends support me too. Exactly. So, you know. But like you said, it's it is good that Nick's mama loves him. I mean, Nick's just a baby. He's 22 years old. Matt, according to her, Matt Crafton was hiding behind tires, and when Nick walked by, Matt jumped out and beat him up. I don't know. According to Matt, he went to have a talk with Nick, tapped him on the shoulders. Nick turned around and threatened him, and Matt punched him. Matt said he gets threatened, he's going to punch somebody. I respect Matt Crafton in this situation because, yes, he did the NASCAR thing and apologized to sponsors and NASCAR and blah, 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 blah. If I was his sponsor, I'd love that. Exactly. But it's a for me, it's like, why would you suspend or penalize either one of these drivers? Matt Wreck had a bad finish. There's his punishment. And Sanchez got a broke nose. There's his punishment. Yeah, he so lost move him on. Let him go. Why Actually, you... assign them to the garages right next to each other. Yes, because rest of the season. I'm going to tune in at I Homestead. Want that line. Exactly. I'm going to tune into Homestead to see what happens next. You've got two guys. You have a rivalry now. Maybe go to them and say it doesn't matter where you qualify. You're getting pits bucks, 31 and 32. Dead next to each other. Every, <laughs> for the have, rest of the – there's fun. your penalty for the rest of the season. Your garage stall and your pit box is next to each other all season Hey, long. boys. Have it out. Have at it. So shouldn't NASCAR penalize either one of them? No. They ought to encourage it. I would think it ought to be in the promos for the next race. NAS- What's that, two weeks from now? Dude, NASCAR was made. It was built on a fight in the grass at Daytona. And nobody was being such a soft individual crying about it. Like, oh, no. Matt's 46. I, know. I mean, dude, Jordan Bianchi and Jeff Gluck. Jeff actually sounds like he agrees with us. He don't feel like anything should be done. Bianchi wants him suspended for multiple weeks. Like, Hey, he said, I'm going to fucking kill you in the video I saw on Twitter yes. about 10 times. So I'm sorry, dude. You just said you're going to kill him. Exactly. You just you took it to another level. Yeah, you exposed yourself to whatever he brings. But they're saying he Matt hit him before that, which he did. He was saying all that after. Doesn't Matt say that he said that first? Matt swears that he said it first. Now, there's no video evidence of what happened, so who really knows, right? And but my point is, why do we? Why do the fans care so much that it makes them so mad to want Matt Crafton suspended for life and or Nick Ch- Sanchez suspended for life? Who cares? I it's, care. I want them together all the time. I do too. I want them to show emotion. I want them to show their personality. Look, Nick's personality is obviously murderous. He will kill you. He says you make so. him mad, he says he'll kill you. I don't think Nick would actually kill somebody, but he says he will. Says he will. All I know, all I can do is take his word for it. He says he got sucker sucker punched. Matt Crafton said he didn't. You know, people on Twitter are mad because Matt Crafton changed clothes. Well, maybe he didn't want to get blood on his fire suit. I'm maybe a- he donated that fire suit to charity and didn't need Nick Sanchez's blood all over it, so he changed first. I'm a firm believer in uh, sucker punches. Who look? The only my granddad taught me this when I was a kid. He said the only fair fight is in a ring. Well, they're not fair either. It, well, if you want to, he said, if you want a fair fight, get in a ring with somebody and get a referee. Then you get a better shot at a fair fight. Otherwise, you fight to win. That's it. You use whatever tools are at your disposal to protect yourself and win. Yeah, go to a Israeli Krop Maga class. Whatever you got to do. I'll show you how to slit a throat with this paper. Whatever. 
I was in the special Israeli special forces. Now you sound like Randy Macho Man, Randy <laughs> Savage over there. Rawr! Brother, I'll freaking kill you with my paper. Oh, that's that be Hulk Hogan. You seen the video of Hulk Hogan at the beach shop, and the little kid walks in. And he's like, Hogan's like, "What are you doing in here, brother?" And the little kid goes all Hulkamania on him. <laughs> it's really cool. I will end you, Hulk. Ah! He calls him the Hulkster. In the Hulkster. It's pretty cool, but no, but I mean, I don't think NASCAR needs to do anything. I hope NASCAR stays out of it 100%. Promote it. Promote it. I want to see the Homestead videos. I want more. The Homestead promos needs to have Nick Sanchez being held back, blood all over his face, and it just bringing your best. Who gets beat this week? Like, let's go, boys. Go for it. Go all out. Like, fight. Have at it. Who cares? Bring personality. That's all I ask for. Bring your personality. Show your emotions. Let it out. Like Nick, bite them next time. Bite, yeah, bite, bite him. them. What's wrong with biting? Nothing. Nothing. It, it's okay. What do you gotta do? Bite his ankle. Bite. <laughs> get, you, get off me, Sanchez. <laughs> Quit biting my ankle. Then crafting, you can say, "Hey, Miss Sanchez, can you get your son off my ankle? Your ankle biter here." Yeah. And a, another big thing they like to point out on the tweeter is um, match 46 and Nick's 22. I think you're adult when you're 18. I think that's more embarrassing to Nick Sanchez to say you got your butt whooped by a 46-year-old. Old man, just kick Old man ass. whoops your butt. You're a kid. You're 22. And you got your nose broke by a 46-year-old. It looks worse on Sanchez you know, than for it does Crafton, in my opinion. For someone... Who wants to kill him so much, it did not look like he was really struggling to break free when they were dragging him off. Oh, no. He was banking on them pulling him away so he didn't get oh, hit he again. Whisper, pull me away. Hey, pull me away. Pull me away. Right. I like his PR, the, his PR lady. She's like, you can't say that. You can't say that. And then when he came out of the medical center, he's like, yeah. And and next weekend, or at home, I'm going to kill him at Homestead on the track. Like he completely, that's okay. what he meant. Wow. I'm going to kill you on the track at Homestead. Like, no. So that's assault if uh, Crafton gets injured on the track. I mean. Because it's premeditated. They're, they're saying this was assault because Crafton had time to cool off, change clothes, hide behind the tires, jump out of the bushes, attack Sanchez. His mama saw it all. Only if they were like getting. she was like 10 pesos behind them or right. something. If they're in Mooresville and they run at each other at Chick-fil-A getting their biscuits in the morning and they fight in the parking lot, that's assault. Well, I at mean, the track. Sorry, what, dude. It's it all did, part of the game. And it didn't happen on the track, so I don't think NASCAR should have a say-so in it. Like, I, don't, I don't think they should even bother. I, I think they should completely ignore it. Just let it go. Yep. Let it go. Looks like it was taken care of. Yeah, it's done with, right? He ran up, crashed Maybe. the ass, lifted back wheels off the ground, crashed him, Matt Crafton, sucker punched him, he bled out of his eyeballs. It's over. Broke his nose. Okay. That's that shouldn't affect him at homestead. He should be able to put a breathe right strip on it. Yeah, go. and it's near the ocean, so you know, that salt humidity water. should and salt water should open it up. I mean, if yeah. you're able to talk doing an interview, you should be able to race at homestead. And he's a playoff driver. And now if I'm Matt Crafton, there's no way Nick Sanchez wins the championship. Period. No, because I'm not winning it. Neither are you, Matt. No, I, I mean, mean Sanchez. Exactly. So. so I heard uh, some responses on Twitter, you know, dealing with daddy's money. Is his dad some billionaire or something? Nick Sanchez? Well, I don't know. I have no idea who his dad is. Maybe. Most of these young kids. Riding on daddy's money. Most of these young kids got daddy's money and is why they're in a car. Which is probably why we have no personality in NASCAR. That's why his mama was there, because his daddy had to go work work to pay for his ride. Like, ah, Nick wrecked again. I got to go, right honey. I got to get some more jobs. Uh, probably corrupt government official. Concrete contractor. Yeah. I'm surprised we don't have Pelosi on track. <laughs> She's, she collects uh, for bookies there in San Francisco. Does she? Yeah. I believe it. Wouldn't surprise me. All right. Isn't KB her name Pelosi? Yeah. Yeah. You know some Pelosi's? <laughs> Moving on. I didn't know if you knew a Pelosi or not. I don't know. You know, they're from Baltimore. Are they really? Yeah. I Her dad from California. Was, no, she married Mr. Pelosi there. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I guess he she wouldn't be a Pelosi, huh? No, her dad was. Well, the, I thought maybe he took her last name. I think her dad and brother were the mayor of Baltimore back in the fifties and sixties. Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. Well, that, that's how she got real rich because you know, all those kickbacks for hundreds of years. Yeah, I thought she got rich from being a politician. Well, no, no, that's that's how you do it. Oh, man, that's what I thought. Like that's easier than what American Bezos dream. did. American dream: become a politician and steal yeah. American money. So, you know, that's what you need to do. I mean, it's too much hard work to be a Bezos, a Warren Buffett, or a Bill Gates. It's to, easier to be a senator. Yeah. And the, AOC. She got elected. I'm sure she does some insider trading. George Santos got elected. Oh, so did Felt, Felt dude, Felter man. Felt a man. He did feel a man. <laughs> he <laughs> don't feel his own self. You got a problem when your wife drops you off at the insane asylum and then says, just, I can't take it. I'm going to take a month off and go on vacation. Well, you saw that they didn't pass the Senate bill to change the dress code for him. He's going to have to put a suit and tie on. Oh, darn. One guy wants to wear a hoodie and you want to change the dress code, but it's, I mean, it's stupid. It's all, it's all stupid. He didn't want to keep the tradition of the Senate. Well, speaking of making money, Kyle Bush sells KBM to Spire. And he sells Rowdy Mechanical or whatever it was, his machine shop. Oh, that is. What about his drink? No, he still owns the drink. You can't buy it anywhere. So anyway. he's still going to use the KBM name. He didn't sell the actual name. He just, just sold the team. the team. Yeah. So now it's going to be Spire. Yep. Truck Sports. Something. Whatever. STP. Yeah. Whatever. Try Spire Racing. Whatever they are now, it'll be the same in trucks. But Kyle will use the Where KBM. Where they get all this money from, dude? That's like. Sixty million they've dropped this month. On, I think they're selling cocaine down in Miami. That'd be track house. Oh, they do it in Nashville, in my opinion. In your opinion, so I don't get sued. <laughs> it's my opinion. Yeah, I don't know, man, but I, I love it. I really do like it. Kyle said he'll run five races for him next season. He'll still use the Kyle Busch Motorsports, except he'll have an eight-year-old driving for him. And Brexton now will be his only driver. When do you think he'll Brexit will win his worth first uh, truck race next year? He's eight now, so I'm thinking. Mm, is it nine to drive a truck? No, I twelve do. for a Xfinity. I and think it's like fourteen 18 for a cup. I think it's fourteen on anything below a mile. So I'm thinking fourteen. So he could do Bristol and uh, Martinsville. Yeah, eight years will be eight years. I'm going to go eight years. That puts him sixteen years old. So we'll say eight years. I think it's. What if he chooses a different path? My son was a great football player and chose a different path. I mean, I think it would be okay. I don't, don't think, think Daddy get all crazy. They'd probably save Daddy a lot of money. I mean, Daddy knows how much it costs to race in this sport. Yeah, because he they, just sold they, it. They're not. You think he's going to supplement his team because they can't win? I think Kyle sold his team to buy into one because RCR? no, because. He doesn't have Toyota backing him. Chevy don't have the money to put behind him like Toyota did. So he gets stuck with crappy driver. Nick Sanchez is going to race for him next year. So he's got all that going for him. Next year was all lined up, but now Spire takes over. Spire's going to keep all the same people. But you look, you got Fox single handedly trying to ruin the truck series. 100%. No, I think they have it's success. Let's, I do too. Let's give him kudos. Way to go, Fox. You guys are awesome. It is absolutely probably the hardest thing I've ever watched on TV is a Fox broadcast. Of the I want to know why the there's – the season. They're all in the same studio, right, wherever they're at. But there seems to be like this delay in what they're seeing and what I'm seeing. Well, then what annoyed me is they're like – they were talking about um, Zane Smith. They're like, look, Zane's going behind the wall. No, he didn't. But they don't know that. If they were in the tower, in the booth, at the track, they would know exactly where Zane was going. But they had to wait on the TVs to show Zane entering the track five minutes later. And they go, oh, never mind. Zane didn't go to the pits. You think Fox doesn't have – they could fly him southwest, probably round trip, 300 bucks. Make them ride in a car together. Yeah, send them across country. I volunteered to go pick them up. I just – I. Did they if Fox don't lose did this? Did you tweet that to him? Oh, I have, yes. I volunteered. Do they ever I volunteered. Reply? Look, I volunteered to go for free. We could have given them a ride. For free. I'll take the driver's photographs so they don't have to use these stupid comic book characters. For free. I'll go pick up. I don't know for if I could do that for free. I don't know if I could spend 
that many hours in the car with Michael Waltrip, Phil, and Jamie. I like Jamie, but I think Fox has ruined Jamie's opportunity to be a in booth commentator because it's so bad. It's you got Fox, you got Jamie, Michael, and Phil. They're never on the same page. They don't even. Are they a different? Are they calling it on a Zoom call? That's what it sounds like. It does. There seems like there's a delay for even their response to the other people that are supposed to be in the booth. We got Michael over here. They'll say something about a car getting loose. He's like, "Yeah, I had corn for dinner, and I drank two waters with it." I mean, he's. Or they go, "Oh my goodness, they're losing it. They're lo- Oh, they're crashing." He stuck. I, I was in, on Dances with the Stars. He's stuck in the pudding while dancing on a spaceship with three aliens and sixteen ants crawling on his toe. I I'm like what, Michael? What the heck are you talking about, Michael? Phil, like, once I had a bumblebee flying to my belly button <laughs> and try, and try then, to get pollen this is, out of this there. This is what cracks me up about Phil. Like I have no racing experience whatsoever. I'm not pretending to be more knowledgeable than Phil, but Phil's like. Back when we were doing it, Michael, you know, it was much harder back in the day. Like, Phil talks like he's a seven-time champion, but... His brother once was a champion. Okay, that's his brother. His when brother... I was living in the shadow, my brother. Yeah, that's he was exactly a champion. No. I remember back in the day, I was watching TV and Michael Waltrip, your brother won. Remember that? I don't know that I, ne- I don't necessarily dislike Phil Parsons or Michael Waltrip or Jamie Little. I just don't like them in a basement in Charlotte hiding from NASCAR. You know what's the funny? They don't even show them in the booth. They're fake booth anymore. They're just voices. Oh, yeah. They'll show them at the beginning standing in front of five TV screens tacked on top of each other with a screenshot of the Speedway the behind Fox them. Fox Studio it's, it's so in downtown stupid. Charlotte. I, I just I can't get behind it. I don't, I don't like it whatsoever. Um, do you think they get paid to do that or they're just volunteers? I hope they're volunteering, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're getting paid. They're mailing it in. They, that's a fact. All right, Jamie. So we were talking about this, and I told you I wanted to bring it up on the show. So we're talking about doing the um, Junk Car 5000 next year, which is me and you flying out to San Diego, buying a car for $1,000 no, or less. It's a shit show 5000. And driving it home. Well, I'm not going to say that. You can say that. Oh, yeah, I, I just did. Okay, so what Jamie said. But – well, I don't know that we originally said we we're going to do the Spanish Trail, but I think it'd be a feat just to make it back to Georgia, much less Florida. We, our luck, will make it we all know, the way to Florida and have to fly home. We'd go to Mobile and hop on what is it, eighty-five Greyhound? What is it, twenty-eight? <laughs> What's the interstate? Twenty. There's one that goes north and south. You go up to Montgomery and cut over to get here. Go I've to done it before. Eighty-five from That's Montgomery. It, eighty-five. Yeah, down to Mobile. Yeah. It goes all the way to Mobile, 85. So mm-hmm. we'll go San Diego to Mobile to Georgia, right? Yeah. And $1,000 or less car. So we're basically going to do 2,000 miles on the Spanish Trail. Basically. So we'll just not going to St. Augustine. No, there's no reason. I don't see any reason to. So we're going to set up a GoFundMe for this. If you want to participate and donate to I us. I think we can get sponsors for this, too. Oh, yeah. Anybody who donates money to this one. We will paint your name on the car because we're going to buy it for $1,000. So well, gonna, I'll print it in a Sharpie. We're going to rattle can it anyway. We're going to paint it up to make it. That it adds is, horsepower. Is, well, we're going to need it if we're only going to spend $1,000 on a car. That's why we don't mind painting your name all over it. I really think we need like Advance or AutoZone to be a sponsor. <laughs> Dude, we can take. It'll be running when we buy it. No, we could take Eric with us. He's a mechanic. That's true. Janet, can we borrow your husband for a week? Yeah, Eric. Eric, we need you, man. Oh, dude, it might take longer than a week. You think? Yeah. Nah, we can do it. If we did the... We drove from here to New York, from New York to L.A., back to here in five days. In a reliable car. Barely. It was a Prius. You had the title in case it broke down. Well, I mean, it did have 200,000 miles on it. Okay. Like, we're going to have one worse than that. I'm thinking like a 1968... What was that one I showed you? 1972 Ford Fairline? Something like that. <laughs> 900 bucks? With a blown head gasket? No, that was the BMW. Oh. Get a, uh, we could buy that poor gasket Ford in probe. the water. Get a Ford oh, probe. probe. <laughs> yeah, we can get uh, Sanchez to bend over. <laughs> Drive it right in. We can get a Ford probe and get... No, wax Sanchez, off, wax off. Sanchez might kill us, man. We can't have him. We'll take Eric with us. Eric, between you, me, and Eric, we can get home. Maybe. 
on a credit card. <laughs> Southwest. Southwest. <laughs> Greyhound. It'd be cheaper. Ooh. All right. Last time you rode a Greyhound, I rode one once. My mother in law went to. I swore never to ride one again. Yeah, my mother in law was going to ride on one, but the Greyhound broke down or something. <laughs> That's typical. In Atlanta. She left from Atlanta and broke down in Atlanta. It didn't make it far. I was, I forget, I had a, I had an aunt that was sick in Asheville, North Carolina. Rode up with my mom. My mom realized how sick she was and decided to stay. I hitched a ride with my uncle down to Greenville. Rode Amtrak into Atlanta. That would be cool. Then Marta oh, down to like the Greyhound that. bus station and took the Greyhound to Atlanta. Now the hour in Greyhound. I worst. got out smelling homeless in one hour. I believe it. I mean, that's a that's a smell you don't want to smell like. It's homeless. Oh, I had, my wife said, "Oh, geez, what is that?" Strange, I'm like, yeah, that's, "That's everybody that got on that bus in Chicago Ugh, three you, days ago." Ooh. All right, so let's jump into that's meth up and other bad meth decisions. That is meth up. That's totally meth up, dude. A Tennessee man. That high never on, happens. What? A Tennessee man high on meth. Does it? No, it never happens. It doesn't? No. This, is, a, this, is, this made is made up. This is made up. AI. It's fiction. <laughs> I can assure <laughs> you it's not <laughs> fictional. A Tennessee man high on meth pulls a machete and tries to attack police officers responding to an altercation. From what I can tell. Think he was the altercation? No, he wasn't. Wow. <laughs> He was, so a homeless man was he. This is a homeless dude. A homeless man was arrested in Tennessee after police said he pulled out a machete and threatened to attack them. Officers were dispatched to the homeless camp in Nashville regarding a person with a knife who was threatening a woman. So, from what I can tell on this story, the person with the knife threatening a woman was not the actual Tennessee man high on meth that pulled a machete and tried to attack the police. As officers looked for the person at the homeless camp who made the call, the man approached them and pulled out a machete and attempted to attack them. Officers demanded that he put it down, but he didn't, so the officers had to tase him. They asked him why he didn't put down the machete, and his response was, because I'm high on meth. The man was then taken into custody and charged with three counts of aggravated assault on a first responder and in public intoxication. You know, this is a... He's a victim. Because he's, he's homeless? A, well. A victim of the system? I think, you know, these Hollywood types, they're all moving to Nashville because it's like the Hollywood of the East. So you're thinking this is a... But the homeless people follow them. A former Hollywood star? Yeah, and former Hollywood homeless. Oh. They're like, oh. So Hollywood homeless, is that like... If they're moving above? to Nashville, I'm going to Nashville. Let's get this RV downtown LA. Let's get it running so we can get to Nashville. So there's a lot of problems with this here. It's... First off, they were called to a homeless camp. Like, wouldn't you think you would say, I'm in tent 3A, the red tent with a hole in the roof, and I'm calling to report a man trying to stab me with a knife? Instead, they just, they don't give any details. So, of course, when the cops get there. They're giving camping a bad name, too. I know. They really are. So, but, like, when you get, the officers get to this homeless camp, and they're trying to find the, the guy with a knife threatening to kill a woman, and out of nowhere comes a man high on meth with a machete. He's disrespecting a machete, too. That is to cut brush to make a path through the jungle, and he's cutting That's people for. to oh. make a path through the homeless camp. Oh, well, it was a weapon that the... Um, it's not a weapon. Sicarios I mean, used. Yeah, it is a weapon. Sicarios and the cartel used down in Mexico. Oh, I thought they may have had that funny bladed thing where they can just cut your head off. No, that's you're, now you're talking about ISIS. Are they the ones with the funny blade knife? Yeah, the, like on the a banana Latin, shape, like on Aladdin. You're talking yeah. about the knife the guys use on the movie Aladdin, right? The, the Chewbacca curve, knife, whatever. The rainbow knife. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a rainbow? It's shaped like a rainbow. I think if you're a rainbow, they'll chop your head no. off. They're an ISIS lamp. No, we're taking the rainbow back. It's the rainbow mm. knife. <laughs> oh yeah. Not anything else. There's a name, Garuba knife or something. Garuba? There, it, it's got a weird name. We'll go with that. I'm well, good with it's that. It's the Garuba. It's better than rainbow knife. With All a right. rainbow etched on it with a laser. <laughs> laser etched? Laser etched. All right, let's go to California. I don't like California. <laughs> this is funny. There's a lot of meth in California. A California man suspected of trafficking drugs takes off with the sheriff's meth after an undercover police sting goes wrong. 
A suspected drug trafficker is on the run now with 60 pounds of methamphetamine belonging to the California Sheriff's Department after the undercover sting went wrong. Authorities had set up a sting in an attempt to identify drug traffickers. Undercover deputies met with the suspect for the drug sale, and the suspect drove away with their <laughs> drugs. <laughs> deputies from the gang task force attempted to pull over the suspect, but he refused to stop and sped off. Due to the high speed and the suspect's disregard for public safety, deputies lost sight of the vehicle. Police in California are encouraged not to engage in high-speed chases. Huh. So I looked as I dug into this story, I can't find where they ever caught the guy. Like they were What is sixty pounds of meth worth worth on the street? Can lot. you Google that? It's not like a currency exchange, is it? Well, it was in kilograms, but I I converted it from kilos to pounds. Did you do it on the meth calculator? I did. Let's see. You're on airplane mode. I was just gonna pretend. Oh <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> ruined it. All right, I got caught. 60 pounds, I, I don't know, I'd think 100 grand a pound maybe. I don't even know what the going rate is for meth. <laughs> I don't either. I don't even know anybody. What's a rock of meth? I don't know anybody that does meth that I can think of. Maybe that's, we're making better life decisions since <laughs> that's we don't what know that anybody says. that does meth. Yeah. If you can't phone a friend to find <laughs> out this meth answer, you're making better life decisions. Yeah. Way to go. Congratulations. You're succeeding somewhere. You're winning. <laughs> And check this one out. A man in Georgia who is a convicted felon was sentenced to 20 years in prison for armed meth distribution. The Georgia man was with a lengthy criminal history who led law enforcement on a high-speed motorcycle chase while in possession of a large quantity of meth and an illegal firearm was sentenced to prison recently. The man put not only himself but countless others at risk as he attempted to escape on a motorcycle with the meth. The police first noticed the man was going 25 miles an hour on the, over the speed limit on his motorcycle when they attempted to pull him over. When they attempted to pull him over, the man takes off on his motorcycle, leading them on a 20-mile chase at over 145 miles an hour. In Georgia, our police are encouraged to cause massive deaths on the interstates by yes. crashing into you. They're encouraged to chase them. Yeah, they want they want pedestrians. Georgia to State die. Patrol was was eventually able to wreck the man without killing him and arrest him. <laughs> wow. The man was in possession of a loaded 9mm pistol. He is a convicted felon and convicted felons are not supposed to have 9mm pistols. Not even in Georgia. Not we even don't in allow Georgia. It. He also had 2 pounds of methamphetamine. A small quantity of heroin, which is probably personal use. Yeah, if you're flying around <laughs> on 140 miles. He had some digital scales on him and $1,600 in cash. Why does he need scales? Well, I think that's how they well, got That's him. how they measure the amount. Did they have to get an evidence scale to verify, or could they just use his? I think they used his. I mean, you could just, you know. If can you I had, borrow this? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need to borrow your scales so I can see how much meth I'm busting Don't you Don't worry. With. I have a weight here. To zero it out. Two pounds, man. The dude, that's why he ran, obviously. Oh. He had been previously convicted of How multiple many grams are in an ounce? You know? 2.2? 2. 2? Ooh, 28. Really? Yeah. 20 so he's got 28. How many? Two pounds? That's so there 32. Is, so there? he's got 180 grams. So there's four. Ounces. We work with a guy four. named Graham. You think he's in the sixteen drug trade? ounces in a pound? Yeah. So he had thirty-two, 32 ounces. ounces. So how many grams? We well, said twenty-eight. That's twenty-eight times ten 32. is two hundred and eighty. Then you got so times had, three. So he has a lot. The thirty. So that's five sixty seven ninety carry the r 790 grams three decimals over and move it back one if a gram's like a thousand dollars a gram he had half a million dollars oh yeah it's money i doubt it's i doubt it's a thousand dollars a gram what if it's good meth I, it, it was, what if it's breaking bad blue meth i don't think they even had the blue meth anymore i would buy breaking bad blue meth if jesse would sign it and i would frame it and put it on the wall i wouldn't do you smoke meth? Drink it? Chew it? Isn't it like snort cocaine? It? I think you snort it. You either snort it. Well, it's called crystal meth, right? So isn't oh. that like glass? 
I thought Crystal was the name of a girl who did meth. Crystal meth. There's probably some crystals that do meth out there. Crystal on crystal meth. Let's go to West Virginia. Can you pass your drug test in Colorado if you're on meth? As long as it's multiple choice, I think you can pass it anywhere. Is there THC in meth? I think it's. I think that drug tests nowadays are all true or false. What causes those big sores you see on false the heads? False. That's true. That's there's this lady. That's they pick at them. You're, there's a song called. Um, we got a meth lady in our meth neighborhood. Head. There's a song called Meth Head. It's a country and western song called Meth Head. It's pretty good. You probably stopped in my town. I sent it to you. Okay. Well, she's you this, probably didn't listen. This to meth it. lady. She's all over town. Is her name Crystal. I don't know. She's got like an '80s hairdo. It's all like not like crude, all puffed, poofed out. But <laughs> you see her just wandering around, yelling at nothing. And and if you get home, like I was at a I think Braves I game. I think I in. saw her when I got off yeah. the exit. I was late at a Braves game. She was laying on the sidewalk, sleeping in front of the Dairy Queen. She, hey, she wants that blizzard well, first thing. Two in the morning. There she is. Do they serve? I breakfast not, at Dairy there's Queen? There's no breakfast. There's a men's prayer club on Wednesday at, morning. At Dairy Queen? Yeah. They open early for that? I don't think Meth Mary goes to that one. Her name's Mary? I don't know. You know her. We, well, we're narrowing think? this down. That's our nickname for Meth Mary. Me oh, not Christian. I don't know anyone that stopped by and said anything to her. You should. You should stop by. Maybe we can have her on the show and she can answer a lot of the questions we have about Meth. Whose car is she going to get in to come here? We'll borrow my mother-in-law's truck and she can ride in the back. Oh, that'll work. Or we get a tra we'll bring her in the Prius trailer. I don't have a... My new Prius doesn't have a hitch installed. Can't we put the old one on it? Nope. Different model. <sighs> different... Whatever. We can tie strap the... Different generation. We can tie strap the, the trailer to the, <laughs> to the exhaust well, the, of the there car. There is a tow hook in the back. We can just tie her up to that and drag her here. <laughs> Eric, Could she sleep it on the sidewalk? Eric can probably help us put a hitch on that Prius. Well, I'll probably see her sleeping because we got a meeting tomorrow. Pick early. her up. Well, we'll I'm, not, I'm not putting her in the car. <laughs> we'll take her to the meeting. <laughs> bring a meth head yeah. to work day. Bottle of mud in the seat where she <laughs> was at. Bring a meth head to work day. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, I found a. I finally found a story in West Virginia, and I, mo mostly for Eric and Janet. Is there meth in West Virginia? Oh yeah. Is Eric, it, is Eric it, and Janet can probably verify. I thought it that, was fentanyl but, was the national problem now, not maybe. meth. Well, it, it's mostly meth with fentanyl in it. So it's mostly fentanyl with a little meth. Is what I hear. So we're gonna give you a drug that causes these big, gigantic boulder pimples popping out of your head, and we're gonna make it a little easier on you with fentanyl to just kill you. Yeah. So you don't feel the Rocky Mountains. Well, like I told you face. before, I listened to that podcast and the drug de the drug dealers want the fentanyl to kill somebody because it makes their demand for their product go up because the junkies, they want to almost die. They yeah, want to get to sense. Well, they don't want to die. They want to get to that almost die point. So they want to get right at the edge of it, but not, they want to chase the dragon right to the edge, but not go over the edge. Yeah, that's like when I was a real young person and like 15 or 16, we go to a liquor store and pay a guy an extra 20 bucks to get us a case of beer. You're paying like 60 bucks for a case of beer? Well, the smart thing, I guess, when we were kids, we should say, hey, get us that 180 proof Everclear, dude. Well, that lasted that for straight. a month. We're going to drink it straight. We'd probably die. Well, it lasted you longer. Now we drink it all at once. Well, why would you do that? Well, we drank the case of beer all at once. Have you ever had that 180 proof straight? I think it burns pretty bad from what I remember. I've never had it. I remember it was Everclear. I know what it was. Yeah, I had uh, like I had a buddy who used to put it in a um, watermelon. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the punch, only way I had it. Punch, punch, what he called it. He would get a he would get a drill, drill a hole in it, pour they'd pour that stuff in it, then you cut it up. It was still kind of burny. Oh, it it was nasty. Yeah. There was never anything. I never had a liquor that said, "Ooh, this is good." It was always nasty. All right, a West Virginia man high on meth gets naked and starts shooting chickens, dogs, and a cow because the voices told him to. You know, if you're doing that that right there, I probably couldn't do meth. with. I don't want voices in my head. So we're not encouraging meth use. We're giving you all the reasons why not, not to, to This do is meth. an anti-drug. This, this is an anti-drug campaign, campaign Look, we're this running. Is what you, this is how dumb you could be. So a West Virginia man is facing charges after deputies say he shot dogs, 
chickens, and a cow while, met, while high on meth because the voices in his head told him to. Police responded to a complaint that dogs and chickens were shot at a residence. When Was they it his residence? No. When they arrived, the homeowner showed them that two dogs and three chickens had been shot and killed. The homeowner said the man has shot her chickens in the past, so they went to his residence next door where they found more dogs and more chickens had been shot and killed. So this guy's a serial killer. Yes. Doing meth. Deputies then heard two more shots in the hollow. And, a holler, I guess. Was holla! Right. Holla! Found two more, the deputies then heard two more shots in the holler. And, so they hadn't caught him yet. No. This guy's just serial killing chickens. And when they walked behind his double wide, the man con they made contact with the man who was naked with a shotgun and began running away from officers. The foot chase lasted for 50 feet because the man was high on meth and accidentally shot himself in the foot. Yeah. When questioned by police, the man stated that he had been smoking meth all day and had to go shoot the animals at the neighbor's house because the voices in his head told him to. And that's why he shot his dog and his cow also. You know what the difference between him and a normal person is? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't listen to the voices in our heads. Yeah. We sh Shh. Stop talking to me. Look, this guy ran from the cops for 50 feet, shot himself in the foot, and fell down. <laughs> that is awesome. Did he tell himself, freeze or I'll shoot? <laughs> Probably. Freeze me. Stop it or I'll shoot me. And he shot me. All That's right. sad. Here's our last one for the week. A Florida man hides four pounds of meth in a gain laundry detergent box and then sells it to undercover officers at the Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> These two men, two men take part in a scheme to try to sell high purity meth in the states of Georgia and Florida by hiding pounds of, the dr of drugs inside laundry detergent boxes. One of the men delivered a box of bright colored green gain laundry detergent with roughly four pounds of meth hidden inside to an undercover police officer at the Burger King. was selling us Tide Pods in New it Mexico? Was it was liquid Tide. He wanted a Tide Pod. He had a fifth of Pod. <laughs> he was just going to give us a bottle cap? <laughs> he was going to pour you a cap of pot Tide. Oh my goodness. That's why I was laughing so hard at the guy. Liquid meth. Liquid meth. After the gain, after the gain laundry detergent delivery, the other man arrived at a motel in Florida to collect $11,000 worth of drug money and was arrested with 10 more pounds of meth inside laundry detergent boxes. So apparently he was hiding it in gain and tied boxes, according to what authorities said. Both men have now been arrested and are facing charges of drug trafficking and distribution. I think they're both made by Procter & Gamble. Meth? No, the gain of the tide. <laughs> well, not these. How do you reseal the box? That's what I want to know. It's Glue? A, it's a cardboard. Yeah, but it's got that tab that... Do you ever use it? I don't, I don't You pull all the way around. You know it ticks when you pull... T -t 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 -t. I use liquid. No, we have both. But it's like a... Sometimes white, we get the pods. But the powder... We don't use pods. The powder is like a white and a blue. We have color. young children in your house. You don't want them to... Not, watch an old video on YouTube. My children, try the Tide Challenge. My children aren't that young. <laughs> or that or dumb. That dumb. <laughs> if your kid's eating Tide Pods, you're probably going to end up on one of these stories there one day. There needs to be an intervention. Hey, was that a... I don't understand, like, the Tide Pod Challenge on TikTok. Was it, like, see if you can survive eating poison? I think some people died, didn't they? Isn't there a warning now? Tide is not for breakfast anymore? <laughs> tide, <laughs> not just for breakfast. <laughs> Save it for dessert. I made a little bit of that Tide on my toast. I think you would have to be doing meth to eat Tide. Or at a gas station in New Mexico. I don't think it's a thing anymore, though. Wasn't that like four or five years ago? That was pre-COVID, the Tide Challenge. Yes, it was. But the, the dude all, during COVID, the it dude was... dude trying to sell you Tide was when we were on the Cannonball Run, becoming Cannonball Run champions in our Prius earlier this year. Because, as you know, we are Cannonball Run champions. When it, you said it was just liquid Tide? It was. You don't remember? It was an orange jug. Like I just remember. Like, I can remember what this dude looked like. You're like 36 hours in. I know, but he looked like. Did Nick I get a dollar? No. No? No, we just took off. Or did I tell him to get the F away from me? 
I think that's when I drove away and jumped the curb. That was the gas station you jumped the curb in. The embankment. <laughs> yeah, so actually we should be thanking this guy for, for trying to sell us the Tide. For evil Knieveling the for Prius? For evil Knieveling the Prius. I won't do that on the Spanish I trail. Think all four wheels made it off. Well, a thousand dollar car. I think we can. Might kind of hurt us. Getting I think it. we'll be able to do it in less oh. time than you think because it's going to be three of us for, since we're taking air. How many days do we give ourselves to get the crappy car? It's got to run. Oh, we have. To, we need to buy the car. Sight unseen? Before, yeah. Well, well, how? Okay, no, we buy it when we get there. But we need to have the car lined up before we leave. Like, we need to buy a car day one. We're going to fly the red eye anyway because we're going to fly the cheapest way possible out there. Maybe 16 connecting flights. Atlanta to Spirit Chicago. Spirit of hair. Atlanta to Chicago to Alaska charge an extra to Florida. 25, 25 Texas, bucks. To You're New wearing York. a hat. That's 25 more dollars. Yeah. Welcome to Spirit. You have underwear on? That's another 25. Yeah, 25. Standing room only. <laughs> What's the other crappy one? Frontier? Southwest by West South. They're not that bad. I like Southwest. We're flying Frontier. So... We'll I think they're owned by Spirit now. Are you going to bring a hat? Your watch would cost you an extra 50 bucks. Probably. I'm okay with that, though. Well, I'm your little it. wristband might cost you 50 bucks. I'll leave it at home. I wonder if it end up being cheaper than Delta. I wonder if I can mail myself somewhere. Why not? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just... If it fits, it ships. I've read about people mailing themselves back in like the 1800s. It worked on a train? Yeah. Well, that's a train. I'm talking about on a plane. I don't think... Do you think that... It's pressurized down in the cargo hold? Oh, yeah. That's where they keep the I dogs mean, at. Not watching action movies from the 80s. Do no. you think they <laughs> pressurize? Look, you can climb the on the wing hold. of an airplane in the 80s. Did you see that one where Indiana Jones was protecting the president? No, he was the president. Oh, Air Force and he, One. And he was running all over the cargo hold. Was he the president in that one? I think so. I thought he was protecting the president, like you said. I, it's been 30 years since I saw it. Air Force One's the name of it. I know yeah. what it's called. Yeah. He, I mean, I think in one of the Die Hard movies, he flew all across country on the wing. Well, you can do that. Yeah, well, in the 80s. Oh, meth. <laughs> all methed mm -hmm. up. You make, bad, you make meth decisions when you're on meth. So, just to reiterate, we are not promoting the use of methamphetamine. We're pointing out the horrible things it does We're giving to you. you more reasons not to do meth. So, we're going to say it here. Do not do meth. It leads to bad decisions. There's other drugs you probably shouldn't do too. Yeah, but, but we're not. We don't have a segment dedicated to those drugs yet. So. But when you die on fentanyl, you're not doing funny things. You're just dead. Exactly. So don't do that either. Don't do fentanyl either. So yeah. we've narrowed it down to the two drugs you shouldn't do: meth or fentanyl or heroin. Because one of these guys had heroin in his pocket when he made well, a bad decision. I saw on the news they're mi mi mixing in that fentanyl with the heroin and the cocaine. So and the meth. You know, maybe you should just not do drugs. Don't do drugs. Yeah, because you're. We'll just go with that. You could die. Drug free people stay drug free. I mean, can you can you be more blunt than don't do drugs? You could die. I don't think a lot of people care though. They're not worried about I it. I think you they're know chasing the rainbow. If you do two tie-ins, aren't rainbow. you going the two tie-ins when you only should do one? You're kind of going down that path anyway. Mm, maybe. Or are you just trying to prevent a headache? You never know. You never know. I'm an ibuprofen guy myself. All right, let's talk some NASCAR racing, Jamie. I wonder. How was that race? What do you think? Was Talladega a good race? I mean, all the talking heads from NASCAR say how good it was with all the two and three wide racing. And let's not forget, 70 passes yesterday for the league, guys. 70. That's not 60. It's not 81. It's not 69. But 70 passes so for the league. So where would you rate it? One to ten. I'm, I'm kind of six four. or seven. I'm a four. We're like six and a half. It was a great last two laps. After Texas, which was still better than Texas usually is, it was an improvement over Texas. Yeah, but now we're comparing it to Texas again, which is you can only compare Texas to Texas. So I'm comparing Talladega to what Talladega. Here's the problem. Right, Here's I'll the tell problem. you what I enjoyed. The end of stage one. The end. Okay, they raced. There was a little excitement at the end of stage one. But there was a little racing, too, at the end of stage yeah. one. Stage two, utterly boring. Yep, even the end. An hour of crap. 
Well, I, I worked on the podcast, so. <laughs> and then stage three, I would say the last half of stage three was fantastic, except for last ten laps. There was there was that red flag that kind of I got bored with that. I mean, can't we just? Race? I don't understand. Can why. we race while they're cleaning it up? I don't understand why you have a debris caution and it takes fifty two laps to clean it up. Like, and what was it? A tractor trailer tire that fell off on seventy five made its way onto the track. No, it was tape. Oh, it was tape. Yeah, it looked like an interliner. For it looked like tape or a piece of Prius. carbon fiber or something like that. But why does it take so long? I look. I they remember couldn't find it again. Talladega and Daytona used to be exciting races from start to finish. You, the cars looked like they used to get squirrely. Now it looks like three wide on a slot car track. Don't you think though? If they left the debris out there, it'd be more exciting. Can you see it popping around up in the air? I think they need a few chicanes. Yeah. On the back straightaway. With a minimum speed limit of like 170. Through you the cannot chicane. really slow down. Or maybe we have a... It like, takes um, a skill. A minimum speed would be awesome. Maybe we have a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> like that truck race, yeah. that, that X dude? Yes. The not, not Jeff Gordon Gordon? Yes. Owns? Robbie Gordon. I don't like saying his name. Oh, like they're it. brothers, though, aren't they? Aren't they from the same place? No, they're cousins. Oh, okay. They're not brothers or cousins. They knew each one other. One won a lot. One never won at all. Yeah. That's why they don't claim them as brothers, because they're just cousins. Remember when the not Jeff Gordon celebrated his victory in Mexico City when he didn't win? <laughs> I think he was on meth. Maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, I just I don't think Talladega is what it used to be. I don't think this car. This car sucks. And I think this car could be, I think this car could be good if they allow the teams to practice. I was talking to a guy on X named, his name is Dave, but me and Dave were kind of going back and forth and they don't let these guys practice. So there's no time to improve the cars. You have NASCAR running simulations on a video game and making all the decisions or using wind tunnel data. That's nothing compares to real life data. I'm sorry. Like, you can, my son can play Forza all day long, but nothing compares to him actually I being can in a watch car driving. porn all day, but it's not the same as the real thing. There you go. Yeah. Great example. Uh huh. Or my son can play video games all day and it's not the same as really driving a car. It's probably not as psychologically damaging as porn either. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> You're still messed up, huh? <laughs> Ron Blaney won the race yesterday. Uh, William Byron. His future brother-in-law helped push him to the lead. and think there was a little family planning there? I don't know if it was necessarily that, but I think if I'm Willie B and I'm in the playoffs, I'm not pushing another playoff driver across the line to win the race. So was the girl in Ryan Blaney's winner's circle, was that his girlfriend or his sister? I hope it was his girlfriend because they were kissing. Well, where is he from, Kentucky? No, he's from um, – He's from North Carolina, though. Yeah. His daddy's from somewhere else. Yeah. His daddy's a big time dirt racer. Midwester. When his daddy was a midget racer or was he a midget? <laughs> he was a midget racer. Yeah. An Indiana boy. Yeah, yeah they're real famous for the dirt tracking. The yeah. sprint cars or something. Something like that. His dad raced though back in the day. Didn't he do the double zero pizza uh Domino's car in the early two thousands? No, that was David Reagan. No, it was David something else. David Reagan drove the double no, zero Aaron's else, car. The, there's a David, but it, Rudiman, David. Rudiman, David Rudiman. Rudiman, yes. Ruda, That's who. What Ruda happened Baker. to Rudiman? Rudabaker. What happened to Rudiman? Rudabaker. I don't know what happened to David Rudiman. He like just disappeared, and we didn't celebrate his career. No, not at all. <laughs> Did he have one? I, I think saw, he won a super speedway. Dude, I saw him. Too. I think it was 2006. I went to the Daytona 500, and we were like. Right at the, we were in the middle, the tri oval and the start finish. He passed us on the last lap upside down. Did he? Yeah. He had some hard hits. Maybe that's why he quit racing. All the hits to the noggin. I mean, Ruta Baker took a Ruta beating. It was just too much for him. I missed the Ruta man. The Ruta Baker. Then he, wa- he was Michael Walter racing, wasn't he? He was so with Truex. Yeah. He was during the whole um, Toyota scam, Spengazi thing. Yeah. Or they used um, jet fuel. Poor Mikey. Never. I'm going to do a, we're, we're going to read his biography next, his Wikipedia page. 
Does he have one? Wikipedia? I don't know. He might not. We might have to make. We'll, it. we'll make it if we've he been banned from making Wikipedia I'll get, for posting I'll get, facts. I'll get Carmine or Giacomo to do it for us. To hook us up. Yeah, they they know some people. They can get the um, Ryan Blank or they know some people at Wikipedia. Ryan, Rude, what's his name? David Rudeman. Dave Dave Rudebaker. They can get David Rudemaker's bio up there. So apparently, underfunded teams. Or poor. <laughs> yeah, that'll <They're>, happen. <laughs> they are using the Chase Elliott fuel mileage gauge to determine how much gas to put in the car. So they just follow him? Stenhouse, on the last lap of stage one, runs out of gas. Like, you got one job, dude, and that's put enough gas to get the car to the end of the stage. How you mess that up so bad? It's Stenhouse. Someone I think from, I think Recky Spinhouse hadn't wrecked enough. I got season. a theory about this. One of his crew members, Rudebaker. <laughs> no, it's not David Ruder. One of his crew members also works in the frozen food section of Kroger, yeah. his sponsor. Trying to get him on TV. Have you noticed Kroger's not a good place to get ice cream? It's always ice cream bird. There's there's crisp, ice crystals in there. Could be crystal meth. I don't know. And it tastes like the other food in the cabinet five rows down. I'm not a big ice cream fan. You sound like you're a very big ice cream fan. I don't like ice cream. But if it's got ice cream, when I pop the top, pop the top to give me honey, again. and it's ice crystal, that means it's, it's got freezer burn. Yeah. I throw it straight in the trash. Actually, I'll put it in the sink, put hot water on it, and dump it. But I only like one flavor of ice cream. What flavor would that be? French vanilla. You don't like chocolate ice cream? No, hey, there's something wrong with you. I, I really don't like ice cream that much. You'll eat some crap, though. You threaten a pour, hamburgers and hot dogs. You threaten to pour processed sugar down my son's throat. <laughs> <laughs> he was refusing sugar. Yeah, well, we eat, we're trying to eat healthier. And well, I didn't have sugar in the raw available. <laughs> <laughs> but who eats a bag of sugar? Well, that's disgusting. You know you got... Didn't I offer him a candy bar? Yeah, and he said, no, thank you. And you're like, I'm going to pour sugar down your throat, boy. He's like, okay, Mr. Jamie, please don't bite, beat me up. Calm down, Crafton. No, he actually laughed at me. Yeah, he thought it was funny. He, tells he, he that, knew I wasn't going to do it. He tells that story to his friends now. He knew I wasn't going to do it. So, um, I guess yesterday was Grandparents' Day because... You had the two prodigal grandsons both hit the wall at the exact same time. And I think... If it's Son's Day, does that also make it Grandson's Day? I They're sons. They're grand. I don't celebrate all those days. It's, I put a picture of my sons up like you know what three today, days late. Do you know what today is? Today is National Smarties Day. The little Smarties candy. I like candy. Smarties. You need to go... I don't even know where you can buy them, though. So you can go retweet a tweet from Smarties and win a year's supply of Smarties. Take like 500 pounds of Smarties. I like sweet tarts better than Smarties, though. Are they good? Well, have you ever had sweet tarts? I like I the think Smarties. there's more I salt. I think Smarties are better Smarties than sweet have tarts. the candy shell, where the sweet tarts don't have the candy shell. I still like a Smartie better than a sweet tart. You can eat a whole pack of Smarties. Can you? you? Well, I don't know. I can't. It's been a long time. We used to get them. That was my favorite Halloween candy, you know? Twist it up. You get twisted up Smarties? Well, you know, you know that sugar's bad for you because sugar beeties. Sugar beeties? They make Smarties. sugar out of these beeties, and that's where they get diabetes. You'll die from eating that sugar. Yeah. I mean, as you guys know, since you're only doing sugar in the raw now. Well, I did. Well, doesn't that sound strange, though? Sugar. sugar in the raw? Does that mean you eat naked? Rum? Are you doing sugar in the I'm raw? Doing it naked, dude. <laughs> Straight up sugar. Is so, is brown sugar better for you than the? Isn't that a song? Rolling Stones. Brown sugar. Yeah, I think that's someone's complexion, not their sugar. Oh. Some people call that sugar too, though. Sugar, sugar. Sugar is sugar, sugar. Like a metaphor do, for do, sex. Do. Oh, honey, honey. I'm just making it up that's, over here. That's, that no, I think that's actually a song. Oh, is it? Yeah. I think I've heard that in a movie. From like the 60s. I yeah. heard it in a movie. You probably saw it on a movie where they were about the 60s. My then, Girl? I never saw My Girl. I remember. It came out when I was a kid. So Brad Keselowski gets Was it rated car. R? No. Oh. No, it wasn't on Pornhub. 
That's probably why you didn't see it. I stopped watching Pornhub. Because like I said. This weekend? Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with it. No more after <laughs> Saturday. It's so unfulfilling. Like uh, I said. All right. Like I said, Brad Keselowski pushed Carson Hosevar into a wreck, sending the two product into While the watching Pornhub? Was, was, <laughs> why Brad, can't they sponsor a car? I don't know. <laughs> that would be you're, hilarious. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> I think the reason Martin Truex Jr. has not finished better than 15th in the playoffs is because he's old. Jay, Joe Gibbs is spending all his money fixing Ty, Ty Gibbs' cars when he wrecks. Well, he doesn't have with, to wreck. Same with Kyle Busch is struggling because RCR is dumping all his money into Austin Dillon's cars that he wrecks. I felt the Talladega coverage was kind of weak. When they did not go back and show when Ty left his pit box dragging the gas can. I know. And then dropped it so on So they fire. have no one there? You text me. Ty, Ty is probably the one that started all these forest fires. I wasn't live yet. I was still like, I was like five minutes behind your text. I'm like, what's he talking about? <laughs> then you saw it. Then I saw it. I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. No, seriously, though, if you think about it, you is got. Is Ty from California? No. Does he think they ship him over there to light fires? Probably. Grandpa flies him over in a jet and he out. throws some Molotov cocktails Probably. out the Will Wells. But I mean, think about it. I don't think Brad did anything wrong there. Brad Keselowski, I don't think Carson, Carson and Brad both said that they did nothing wrong was done. Neither one of them thought anything wrong. But what I do think, it's kind of odd that Denny Hamlin's the only Joe Gibbs car that's running good right now. Kyle Bush did good at the beginning of the season before Pop Pop blew all his money on Austin Dillon. I think. These guys running their grandkids out there. Don't forget, it's costing them he's, money. It's Ty cost, don't run for RCR. It's got to cost them a lot of money, though. He's not running for RCR. Don't you think Papa's paying for the ride? Ty don't even have a ride next year. Well, that makes complete sense to me. Harrison, I'm surprised Harrison got renewed, to be honest with you. Harrison. Oh, Burton. Burton. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Yeah, me too. But I think that's just name recognition, his daddy, and money. He brings sponsorship to the table. He brings something to the table. At Dex, they follow him. Dex yeah. Imaging. I don't know what they do, but since it's imaging. And take images of Dex. Oh, with iPhones? Yeah. Hmm. We could do that. That makes sense. We could do that. I think we could come Why up. Why does like, an Apple sponsor? You got a, a nice looking deck. Can I take a picture of your deck? Don't you think Apple should sponsor an NASCAR? You would think, but I think it's go we're starting to lean that direction where we can get an Apple or a Amazon sponsor because of our beautifully designed new race car. Well, just because of our leadership of NASCAR leadership, the they're, France family. Yeah, they're starting to lean more towards the Apple Armageddon type of stuff. You think they are into some Vichy Schwa, or it's more like French fries? The French. You family. think the French family knows Epstein's? Isn't that just off the coast of Florida, yeah. his island in the Bahamas? Mm -hmm. There's a chance. I mean. I don't want to get sued. Speculation. It's close. In our opinion. And they're billionaires. No facts are proven here. No. And billionaires like to go to Epstein Island or presidents or ex-presidents. All right. So coming to the checkered flag. You think Hunter went to Epstein Island? Oh, yeah. He worked there for years. He <laughs> was the pool boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> coming to the checkered flag, Corey LaJoy gets into Riley Herbst. Wrecks the whole field. I don't think Corey's at fault there either. I think Corey... It was just like what happened with Brad and Carson. You had a more established, experienced driver in Corey LaJoy. Corey's dang good at super speedways. I he, mean, Herps is just unexpected. He even picked him. That was the only guy you picked. It was worth a poop. Facts. 100% facts. Kevin Harvick finishes second place, almost wins the race. No, he finished last, Brad. And then he gets disqualified for the window. Well, what the heck does that mean? They didn't so tie him down to no, the right. I think Torque? this is what holds the window on the car. And because they're loose, it allows that window, when the wind hits... A little more the, downforce? It allows bow it, to, it in? allows it to bow in because it's not attached securely on the sides. So it adds more downforce to the car. It is also, in my opinion, could be a safety hazard. If that window flew off, it's not that it's going to hurt anybody. I mean, I guess it could fly up in the stands and decapitate well, Apparently what I heard, though, was fastened to the top and bottom, just not the side. So it's getting that air pressure and bowing. Correct. Just another air dam. Correct. So, But I think it's a safety issue because could you imagine being Kevin Harvick in there with your glasses on? You're riding around 200 miles an hour like this. Well, Kevin. And your window flies off and the wind hits you in the face at 200 miles an hour. 
sucks your head sideways and you're stuck. You can't see no more because your head's turned sideways. Then you wreck the car. Now it's a safety hazard. Boy, it make a great storyline, though. It does. Yeah. I, 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 they, are they getting so desperate for Kevin to get a win that they're willing to cheat up the cars? You, well, final season. If you're driving a Ford and you're not Brad Keselowski and his cheating. teammate. I think Ryan Blaney was probably cheating yesterday to win that race. I don't think he's going back to R&D, so he should Does be okay. Roger cheat? Roger don't know what he does anymore. I saw that interview with Roger. Oh, I talked to Ron, and our goal at the beginning of the race was to win. We, thinking, we wanted to win, and that's we were, what we talked about. We're really thinking about winning. Um, Ron, where's my pudding? <laughs> Apple sauce. <laughs> it, I'm just saying, man. Joe, Is he going to sell it to Joey, Joey Logano? He needs to sell it to somebody. You know, he's got a son that does not get the limelight like he does that actually runs things. Oh, well, that explains. So, never mind. And then Austin Cendrick's okay. daddy runs stuff, too. Yeah, that's why Austin's got Austin to ride. Austin Cendrick's daddy runs the racing program for Indy and for NASCAR. That's how Austin got to ride. I think his son runs the actual business that makes money. Austin? No. Oh, Roger. Penske's son. Like, you know, they have the truck rentals, the leasing. They got, I think they own Detroit Diesel, the engines and tractor trailers. So here's my Penske cars. I met Roger Penske, super nice guy. Um, when you were ten, and he was no, actually 70. I met him in um, oh uh, Kroger. No, a couple of years ago when we were at where did we go Charlotte. Oh uh, yeah, I met he him was in there. Charlotte. Super nice guy. I was like, hey, Mister Penske. Now I knew to call him Mister Penske because previously I had met Roger Penske when Rusty Wallace raced for him. Got this car signed by Rusty Wallace. And you here. said Roger. No, but somebody else was screaming, "Hey, Roger! 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 Sign my hat, Roger!" And Roger turned around, looked at him, and said, "It's Mister Pinsky to you," and walked off. Huh. He didn't even sign the hat. So I, I thought that was kind of rude. But hey, obviously the man makes billions, so he can think a whole lot of himself if he wants to. Not my call. I don't make enough money to think that much of myself. You can call me Brad. You can call me Mister Brad. I look for my Carden. dad's ghost if you call me Mr. Farrow. You man. can call me anything you want. I'm probably going to answer to it. Dad, where, where, where's the dad? Hmm. Hey, there's Sydney there. So, um, right behind you. Did you watch the, did you see the highlights at least from North Wilkesboro over the weekend, the modified tour race? No, I don't pay for anything extra, Brad. I know that. But did you watch the highlights are free on H on YouTube? Negative. Go watch them. Ryan Newman looked like he called. I don't him. have a good internet connection right now. Ryan Newman and Doug Kobe coming to the checkered flag kind of got a little bumpy bump. Ryan was there? Oh, yeah. It looked like Ryan actually called. Oh, yeah. He round. don't do super speedways for where? No. No, he knows better. It hurts. Too <laughs> Did you notice on like lap five of Talladega, the whole three rows are coming. And right in front of them is one little 51 car. Yeah. Neutronic or whatever. Yeah, Neutrek. Like 33 laps. <laughs> like, lap, lap two, he's already five yeah. laps down. Now, I watched the modified tours race at North Wilkes for over the weekend. Uh, Matt Hurstman won that race. Great race uh, from start to finish. I mean, it was an action packed race. North Wilkes for a man with a good car. North Wilkes for puts on a phenomenal you race. You mean a non Gen 1? Yeah, a non NASCAR car. Well, I, actually, a modified is a NASCAR modified tour. So, a non-gen car. Was that a Wayland? The new gen. Next gen. Was it Wayland? Wayland. NASCAR Wayland. Wayland. They wheeled it. I see them I all. Wheel. They got wheel. the I wheel. State Police Training Academy, and there's a Wayland place next to it. Yeah. Wheeling, Wayland, whatever you call it. They make all the emergency lights on the yeah. top of the ambulances and the police cars. And they make the caution lights on the top of the track. On the walls of the track that flash yellow. I don't think Marcus has spent those things look very 80-ish to me. No, Marcus needs to get new ones. I mean, if you ask Casey Boat, she's going to tell you how great all of Marcus's facilities look. Even Texas, she thinks is like a five-star hotel. You could eat off the ground there, but according Atlanta's to, not that nice. According to everybody else that went to Texas, it's not that nice. But now, on a one-on-one -on -one level, I, I talked to him all night when we were at Charlotte last year. Super nice guy. Didn't know who he was. He's so nice. I thought he was. There's no way this guy's involved in NASCAR to be this. No, nice. he's very helpful. I hey, know. You want another water? Can I he get you a bring cup? it to you. A super nice guy. 
I, I got like, no oh, issues with you're the one that said, no, Hey, that's Marcus Smith. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, that's the guy works for him. It ain't Marcus's problem fault though. These are Marcus hires people to make decisions and they make bad decisions and he has to well, he gets got, blamed for them. I got a new president there. Who? Who figured out Texas. Texas. Yeah, they'll sell the track and turn it into a condo development. That would be their best bet. Or what's that place we you, you play golf at? Top golf. Top golf. I put they top make golf three there. top golf. Yeah. Make a big top golf. Top topper and topest golf. Well it's Texas, so it would be a bigger top golf anyway. Isn't that where they're headquartered? I don't know, probably. We'll go with that though. Justin Grant wins the BC thirty nine. You say BC powder? Race. No, Brian Clawson. Brian Clawson was killed in a car crash a few years back, and um, Justin Grant actually a grew up with him. Car track? Yeah, oh, he was horrible. killed in one of these cars. But Justin Grant and him were best friends. They grew up together, and um, he goes out. Justin Grant wins the race. Actually, the guy leading the race jumped the cushion with like five laps to go, giving Grant the lead, and he was able to hold off and take the lead. Great race, though. Another great race on Flow Racing. Flow Racing, thank you for all the great excitement you've given us this year. And giving me this year. Jamie's too cheap to subscribe. It's like eight bucks a week or something. $150 a year. You know what I can get for 150 bucks? Flow Racing. Two shares of Georgia, well, Southern Power. And for the rest but of I my think, life, I will make a 4% dividend. I think you would feel better about racing as a whole if you had flow racing heck we might have to report on flow racing races I, if next i year. had flow racing i would have to get a new couch every other year because i would become a fixture on the couch you can watch it on your phone as you drive down the road <laughs> that'll work <laughs> safer that way yeah so rumor has it the nascar 2024 schedule will be out very soon Kind of hard to believe that we have five it. races left in the 2023 season, yet we still have no they're, idea they're what the They're blaming it on like. those French Canadians. The Canadians. Mm -hmm. The Canadians. Isn't it, what is it, Quebec or Montreal track? Montreal. They so, used to run the Xfinity there. What happened? I think they're going to do a street course in Quebec. Streaking? Montreal. A streeping course. Are they going to have all the drivers run naked through? Well, that sounds like a very French thing, doesn't it? It does. Run around naked. It might be interesting. I don't know that I necessarily want to see all the. I definitely want to go. See the drivers it's naked. a cheap way to be French run instead around. of flying across the pond. We just be naked and run around. Yeah, talking French. So when you and we oui, we oui. when you and your buddy drove around naked together, did y'all talk French? No, but the women <laughs> and the big jacked up. That was back in the day. We well, they're jacking up again now. But you had the big monster trucks. Yeah. They would bend over and go, wee wee. Wee wee. <laughs> it's a wee wee. <laughs> and I said to my buddy, I said, Do you think they're French? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so, all we know about next year's schedule is we will be returning to the LA Coliseum. I love that. I think it's awesome. I don't know if we'll be returning. Well, not, not us. We're going to San Diego. I don't think they're have, unless they move the Coliseum to San Diego. Well, you probably get a lot of $500 cars there at the homeless shelters. Camps, you know, we could they go, would stink. We could probably get a car for five hundred bucks in Inglewood with some crack. We, we might be able to make it back home before we get arrested for driving a stolen vehicle. That should be our challenge: buy a stolen vehicle in Inglewood and see how far we can make it without getting arrested. Tell a crackhead we want that car right there. Yeah, so bring a crackhead to work. Oh, that'd be great. Get them to steal like a '67 Camaro convertible. I'm thinking of Ashton Martin, but. It's probably easier to sell. Yeah, tomorrow. they like those fancy cars over in Hollywood. Yeah, there's probably plenty of them. So all we know is the Coliseum will host the Clash. The Daytona 500 will be the first points paying race. Is Daytona actually going to host the 500? It is. This year, that's good. Uh, we're not racing on dirt at Bristol. North Wilkesboro will host an all-star event. I, I Can they get go-karts or something? Yeah, I hesitate. I think they should make them run it in the Modifieds, honestly. Because I had to hesitate to say a race. You know, that'd be cool if NASCAR owned the Modifieds. Said so this is like an IROC? Yes. These are sealed. You can't touch them. It's an all-star race. Do it. Yeah. Why not? Put them in late models. I don't care what you put them in. Anything but the next-gen yeah. car. You cannot bring your pit crew. The Indianapolis race will be the Brickyard 400 back on the oval. We know that. I didn't like their road course. We're going to be Chicago streak. Re street. I said streak. Streak it again? We're streaking in Chicago again on the 4th of July, baby. Now, Chicago street race again, and we're going back to Phoenix because 
The last three years haven't yeah. sucked. So if let's it does go back. It rain here, it might suck. Maybe. I don't know though. I'm open for. I'm. I think we should have another street course because. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was the best street course this year. All right, Jamie, read some hotel reviews for us, man. Well, because we're racing in Charlotte. Charlotte. We're not going. But if we were, Jamie. If Marcus gave us a press pass again, we might. Yeah, Marcus. When you listen to this tonight, Marcus, give us a shout. You can email us. I think this person, when I first read, I think the British. Oh, okay. Oh. I yeah. really do. It's so bad, it's funny. It was kind of funny. I wouldn't go hilarious. Ha ha. Like, hee hee. It's funny. I'm he, he, really having funny problems hard. finding like the real fall on the ground, cramp up because you're laughing so hard. But anyway, the earlier reviews are true, and I read the, the they're horrible. I mean, this place is like a one star in every aspect. I will start with the only the positives. Well, thank you. Our room was quite big, and we had a TV. That says something. Doesn't say it worked. I said they had a TV. Did it get yeah. stolen mid <laughs> mid stay? It, but it all went downhill from there, Brad. It happened to Mike here. The location leaves a lot to be desired, unless you happen to be a freelance exotic dancer. Does that mean you're not working full time? I think it does, doesn't it? What is a freelance exotic dancer? There's probably a temp service for exotic dancers, and they work for that. Temp ask our, service. Do you think the Lance we know is freelance? <laughs> it might be. Hey, Lance, can you... Are you free? Are you free? <laughs> Lance, let us know if um, you can be a freelance exotic dancer. Maybe Lance is a freelance exotic dancer. He could be. I know he's... Maybe he owns the employment agency. I, I hear rumors he's going to start selling his feet online, so... Wouldn't that be a two and done? Like You sell one foot and then the other and then you're done? Not having a foot fetish? I don't know. Oh, like pictures of his feet. It was like foot porn. That freaked me out. Like, uh, I don't know how you can do dude, foot I, porn. I hate feet. I can't stand feet. Like my kids and my wife. That's it. I wear shoes all the time. Me too. Like I don't want to see anybody's feet. My wife's feet, my kids' feet don't bother me. I remember when I we had our nephew one time jumped on me with his like on my couch with his feet, dirty feet, and it foot freaked me out and I nudged him off into the floor. I, I feel bad for that now, but I don't like feet. I don't care how old you are. I don't remember this when I was first reading it, but... And the freelance? Well, freelance here is, he's actually, he's nonchalant about what he's saying. He's got to be Britisher. Nestled? Because he's nestled in a district of sex shops and strip clubs. Mm. The area attracts the sort of people that you would cross the road to avoid. As I was buying a strap-on, I got dirty looks. <laughs> what? For his iPhone so he could exercise? Well, he's, what's he talking about here? Again, we need to ask Lance. I, I think maybe this is not referring to a sex shop. Oh, I think it's... Because I have a knee brace that's a strap-on. No, I'm thinking this is 100% <laughs> But he just, out of the blue, like, not even strange. I think in England it's probably not strange, but here it is. Well, he got dirty looks, so apparently somebody else thought it was strange, too. It's the nerve, he says. The nerve. <laughs> the nerve. As you enter the hotel, you're greeted by decor that is almost medieval. And a strange man who is always angry and ironically smoking a cigar next to the no smoking sign with nothing but his underwear on below his shirt. He does have socks and slippers. Well, I mean, you're you is just that ironic. A, I think just that's ironic. A strap on, dude. <laughs> this dude is smoking a cigar going, hey, we can fix something with duct tape in this cigar here. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you'll enter the lift. See, this is the clue that gives me the lift. Britishers. Yeah, not elevator. Maybe he couldn't spell elevator, though. A like, lift is what they have in the garage at NASCAR. But maybe he couldn't spell elevator. Like, I would struggle. That's a long word. That's like more than six letters. He says, I've seen suicide attempts that adhere. He's Britisher. Adhere. That's what glue does. I it adheres. Or tape. Suicide attempts. That to adhere. more health and safety measures. What? I have seen suicide attempts that adhere to more health. Oh, oh. Maybe it was ad There's here. rules in England for it's suicide. Ad. It's ad here. You place your ad there. If you want right. to advertise on the side of a strap-on, you place it there. But England has so many rules we rebelled against them in our revolution. Hmm. 
He's talking about there are suicide health and safety measures in England. There's only certain places. It's like the smoking area. You can smoke over there. In England, they're like, hey, look, what are you doing with that noose? And you're like, well, I'm going to commit suicide. Like, no, over there is the suicide. You have to go to the suicide That's only the suicide area. tree in the park. You have Grand to go to the Central. suicide area. Well, they probably got a central park in England, right? Maybe. I mean. Never been. I've been, but I don't think it was called Central Park. I doubt it. I doubt we stole the name from them. Well, anyway, seriously, there was some brain matter on the left wall and a puddle of blood on the floor. Hmm. Take the stairs. I would. See, he's so nonchalant about everything. Like, this is what he sees every day in London. I rather optimistically... That's a big word. So he definitely can spell elevator. It rather, I was like F, it rather optimistically has a four-person maximum capacity. God help you if you're on, one of your companions happens to be fat. Well, then you don't put four people on there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen fat people that are equivalent to two or three people. I have too, and I don't get on the elevator with them. Well, I don't shame them either. No, but I'm still not getting I on might there. say I'll take the next one. Yeah, I'll take the stairs. It's, what, four there's no. Doors. There's also no brain matter or puddle of blood on the floor on the stairs. Well, there, well, might, there be. might be. Yeah, you might not want to take the stairs. In the hallways, the walls are carpeted. That's strange. Mm. I've seen it, but it's strange. But at least the carpet is almost clean. I guess those are the ones on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, unlike the carpet on the floor. The same story continues in the room. There hasn't even been an attempt to clean it. The floors and surfaces are coated in dust. Yeah. As well as a whole host of stains that I will not describe in detail in fear of putting you off your dinner. The English, he's English, putting you off your dinner. Yeah, nobody puts you off your dinner. Yeah. Or rooms. Oh. It should have been our, room. our rooms. It is our room. Yeah. <laughs> I got too much sleep last night. Our Obviously. rooms had two doors and three piles of feces, <laughs> one at either in the room and one in the middle. Sounds like they're very organized poopers. It does. Neither seems secure. But do you think maybe he got sidetracked here? <laughs> does he mean the doors or the feces? Were the feces like those rocks that travel in the Mojave Desert that they can't explain? Maybe. Because they're not secure. Feces. We'll have to ask Lance about this, yep. too. Lance. He's a freelancer. He's a freelancer. The view from our windows were was ridiculous. It looked out at a concrete slab about two meters. Yeah, he's he's English. Oh, no doubt. Because we've never adjusted to that metric system. Yeah, I don't even As know what we two meters are. On the fifth floor is about twenty meters drop to the floor below and twenty meters upwards until you reach daylight. This meant that it felt like three AM all day, and opening the window did not affect the heat of the room whatsoever. It was like sleeping in a sauna. Well, they're definitely in Charlotte in the summertime. I dragged, oh no, hold it, I skipped the line. Some of the bed sheets have been washed, but some still had hairs on them. If I hadn't cleaned my bum, isn't that English for butt? Yeah. I'd drag it across the sheets. So that, he's, he's not a highfalutin royalty. He's not high class. He's, he's willing to wipe his ass on sheets. Yeah. Wow. The mattress was so soft, you almost fell through it. I opened the drawers. Is that like the drawers of the dressers or his pants? And then he hastily shut them. I've snapped the band of my underwear before. Is that what he's talking about? <laughs> Probably, because the next line tells me it's for sure that. They reeked of tobacco just like the hotel lobby. <laughs> yeah. They smoke a lot in England, don't they? Yeah. Because they got public they got public health care or something. They got Obamacare. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think they got a different name for it's it. It's called but King Care. King King Obama Air. <laughs> Queen Care. Yeah. King or Queen care. Our room had only one bug. Oh, that's it? Which was in the bath when we arrived. Well, it had to get clean. But other rooms did have bed bugs. Is that where uh, the other three doors went to? Probably. The bed bugs? We were lucky the bathroom was covered in body hairs. And for the first two days, the sink wouldn't drain at all. They were. Is that something you want to happen in England? There was a stain under the toilet and brown stains on some of the towels. <laughs> Gee, that's probably why he wanted to wipe his butt with the sheets. Probably. So there was no shower curtain either. <laughs> Hold it. I must have been too tired when I made this. <laughs> I 
it's got to mean something totally different. <laughs> it can't mean what I think it means. I read it. I don't know if I can. <laughs> you have to. He's so matter of fact about this. Go ahead. Oh, I'm tearing up. There is not so I did mysterious. not see this when I first copied and pasted this. Let's see if I can find what. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is so wrong. It is. So who is the strap on I for? I think he's got to mean something else, but he had the strap on. No, I don't think he means something. I think he means exactly what he says. Go ahead. My wife is a squirter. Sheets be wet. <laughs> what the hell? That's why they were yellow. Wow. He's so nonchalant, just like the other thing. There was also a man going around rooms. When we arrived, asking to use people's <laughs> showers. I don't know why he'd want to do that. Because he needed a shower. He needed a bath. I like how this guy just throws. He, goes, he just throws. There was a not-so-mysterious mis yellow stain under the toilet and brown stains on some of the towels. <laughs> My wife, My is, wife a is a squirter. <laughs> Sheets wrong? beware. There was also wow. a man going around room to room. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this? It must be acceptable to talk this way I in mean, England. it's like in the middle of a paragraph going, I also <laughs> drive a six-speed. Yeah. We have a charge, you all. <laughs> What's that have to do with the hotel review? <laughs> you just admitted to ruining the sheets. And he never said his wife was with him. I thought he was there with his buddy. Uh, good night, oh my. This guy is one messed up dude. Once informed, the hotel, oh, oh, for the guy asking the shower, grabbed a stick and went searching for him. <laughs> Later, we saw him with a gash over his eye and bleeding into his towel. Now he really needs to take He's a shower. He's not a lot about this, too. Like, yeah, this happens every day in London. It does. The room did not have a safe. It doesn't sound safe, either. And it really needs one. No. No, no you just don't you need to stay there. you got this other stuff here? Yeah. The TV with your also on. did not have a remote control, but he was very happy that it had a TV. The Continental Breakfast was... Cheap packaged bread, cheap salami. Ooh. Salami? I've never had salami. I'm like, good Lord. They just plastic. plastic wrapped cheese. I didn't try it. You should have. I value my life and can only imagine how it tasted. It tasted no well, worse. Your wife's a squirter, too. <laughs> Add that in there. A little of that with some mayonnaise, and you got a sandwich, right? But maybe he means. A manwich. Maybe he means his wife had the squirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. She eats so much bad Mexican. She had the continental breakfast the day before. I belong to a club where there's a British guy in it. Should I ask him? You ask have him? to ask him. I think next two. We have a listener meeting. in Britain. We have some British listeners. Ireland. No, I mean we've had people listen to this oh, show okay. in England. So yeah, you look at the map. Yeah. So if you if you're one of our English listeners from England, is she talking about? Where's she squirting out of? <laughs> I mean, it's so weird. I'm not Googling that. No. You can. No, I I was working today and I got a company computer. <laughs> I think I'd get fired. Probably. We got that new iron. It's not iron scales. That was the old one. Iron it wasn't. Fist. I think we got steel blocker now because iron wasn't strong enough. Probably. Yes, it was near the center of Charlotte. Yep. Okay. But so are many other reasonable hotels. Yeah. I don't think this one would be considered reasonable. They can't all be this bad. Seriously. Do not do it. There are prisons that are luxurious by these standards. I don't know. And before you ask yourself, can it really be that bad? Trust me. Yes, it can. And his wife's a squirter. <laughs> they, they gave him dirty looks when he bought a strap on. I hope I it mean, was a wrist support. If you re... If you re <laughs> this dude is nuts. You rearranged the wording of his... Review. I bought a strap on. My wife has the squirts. What? I'm so confused here. Actually, I'm not confused, but I wish I was confused. This one I uh, is sh way shorter. He, he gave us the zip code where he lives. <laughs> James <laughs> A.S. Lives James in 29151. Yeah. I, I Googled that. That's South Carolina. Oh, okay. Well, then he should. But he says there. he's from Chicago. Maybe he was born in South well, Carolina. Well, I'm thinking maybe Chicago. he thought you put the zip code of where the hotel was. Well, that this would be in Charlotte, not South Carolina. Well, but we went. We had a business meeting in Charlotte. Remember, just we stayed in Charlotte, but a mile away was South That's Carolina. Right. Yeah, I do remember that. Now. Was it Fort Hill, Fort Mill? 
Just South something. Carolina. But when we got to the hotel, we said, thank God we're not in South Carolina anymore. Yeah. I do remember that. That's where we changed clothes at the rest area. Yeah. yeah. To be neat. To be, yeah. That was strange, strange group of people we met. Strange, so, strange, strange. All yeah, right. Was there a Britisher there? Maybe he works there. Maybe. I'm not not going to speculate. They might listen. I like a rare smoking room. Does that mean he smokes? Uh, what? <laughs> this is what James says immediately. James, I like a rare smoking room. Well, maybe he like maybe he likes to smoke. Yeah. Isn't isn't North Carolina Tobacco Road? Maybe. I left my door hinge open and didn't notice my drapes had a bit of the window exposed. The front desk called. I left my door open hinge <laughs> for fresh air. I accidentally left a sliver of the curtains open. Is that a call sign for swingers? I'm I'm so confused by his first paragraph. The front desk called me and asked me to shut it down as if I was a prostitute. Is that code? Maybe. I'm a 49-year-old fat man. Oh, so he's ready to fight. Is that what it means then? Yeah. I called back asking why they weren't concerned with room creeps. Well... If you're doing a secret sign saying you're a fat male prostitute, they probably think you're asking for room creeps, right? Probably. They said they look forward to me checking out tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I get that. Can't wait to you check out. I get Karen, that. Man, Karen. Absolutely do not stay here. Well, this is, you know, he went away before he told us not to stay here. Meth and crack whore heaven. Why did you leave your door cracked open when the drapes out there? It says Haven. 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 Oh, that's like my, my family. My buddy's got the squirts. I got it now because that's I'm dyslexic. But, you know, my family has a beach house at Beach Haven, not yeah. Beach Heaven. Isn't that a movie? No, oh, not at my house. T TV show. Quakers don't like TV. Oh, okay. I have to check. It's kind of like you're driving. I got to be secular when I watch television. Oh, okay. You don't like electricity. I have to be secular when I drive because it's the only way. Well, you know, when we were in Bristol, a, a listener accused me of being Mennonite or something. I, I didn't know how to respond. You told him you drove. I have a car. I rode with you. Oh, yeah, you did. Maybe Jamie is. Jamie probably is a closet Mennonite. He just hasn't come out yet told everybody. They're not even related. Different religions. But anyway, they dress the same. Mennonite Jesus might be a little different than Quaker Jesus. Well, Quaker Jesus lets us drive cars. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Where are we at? Well, he's a fat. Oh, check it. Oh, me oh, absolutely do not <laughs> stay here. Meth and crack whore haven. There you go. Smelled like someone was cooking meth in a room next door. You must know what meth smells like. Yep. Kind of links in with our prior. Kind of meth heaven, or was that meth haven you you read, or is that next week? Meth next haven. week, meth haven. Right. Meth haven. Police activity in the parking G lot. So they're assigned different parking. Yeah. Crack horse stopped me as I got out of my truck to check in. She Why did you, you do know, that first? Dude? She was just letting you know she's there. She's just checking in with you. Hey, bud. And asked for a dollar to go across the street and get a pop. Well, he's from up north. He is from up north, but it's like two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, you, you ain't now, getting a, even a crack whore can't yeah, get a, I mean, can't five get a bucks pop for a dollar. Even, yeah, five bucks won't get you a coke and a candy bar anymore. It's likely they are trying to make the ghetto look classy, but a ghetto with new bed dressing and a half-ass paint job is still a ghetto. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I haven't disagreed with them yet. Even the newly renovated room we asked for, so there's someone with them. Since only 50% are, I guess, newly renovated. It's disgusting and not actually renovated. It's just a shoddy job of putting lipstick on a nasty, very nasty pig. Yuck. This is a sentence I like. <laughs> I got a urinary tract infection from masturbating on the bed. <laughs> Stay away, zero stars. <laughs> is he related to the British dude? The, the thing <laughs> people say in their reviews is Does that mean boiling. someone else with an infection slept in the bed the night before? Probably. 
They, <laughs> they masturbated. They didn't in the change bed the, night the night before. bedding, so he got the oh, the squirting is what the the other maybe. It's not the same hotel though. Maybe they checked out the other hotel. The British people I came to his hotel and squirted this, on the sheets. This was, I think, the squirts is something you get yeah. after you eat to too much Taco Bell. That's what I'm going with. You know, I had. I feel better about that. It's not just Taco Bell though. I had a business meeting last week. And they gave you the squirts. We went to a Mexican restaurant. A Mexican. Food and you know, I, I just get a cheese quesadilla, right? I know. I was starving because I didn't have dinner the night before or breakfast. Two I got cheese two too. cheese quesadillas. And then we ordered the, he ordered the uh, melted cheese to go with the free nachos. You dipped in that? I dipped in there. Well, wouldn't that stop you up? It's it had the opposite effect. Like I can make a mean cheese quesadilla. This was mean. <laughs> I got home and was running. You owe me a pizza, and I'll make you a cheese quesadilla. I thought it was just sauce. Why don't you just make me the whole pizza? I don't think the dough would probably drop driving it over. We well, could do that. You'd have to let it sit for a day. That's fine. Well, I can. Uh, I already have the dough. You just make the sauce, and I can. We make homemade pizzas too. So you make the sauce, and I'll just have our pizza. Thanks, Uncle Tony. We need, he's not even dedicated to him. No, but now you're going to make me some Uncle, Uncle Tony, Tony sauce. Show me how to make sauce, and now you're going to hook me up. It's my curse. I wasn't even told to make you sauce. I was told to ask you to make me sauce. So I've asked you, and you said you would. So. I told you, you know, Uncle Gio, when I worked for him in air conditioning, Yeah, I did exactly what Uncle Gio said. Well, Uncle Gio Uncle says Gio I should ask you that. for sauce. We go, you know. Uncle Gio gonna get this. Well, you gonna get the sauce? I'm I'm actually excited. I've been trying to get some of your cooking for a while. All right, so we're racing at the Roval this weekend. The roast, rate roast. The race is at two p.m. <laughs> you sounded like a cartoon character. Rut row, Rut row, Scooby Doo there. All right, roar. Roar. We're racing roar. at the Roval this weekend. We're scooter snack at two p.m. And we're going to race on NBC and PRN. It is a road course. The last race here, the top 10 finishers it's are. It's the last road course. The last, yeah, thank God. Last time we raced at the Roval last year, Bell won the race. Harvick finished second. Bush finished third. All men, Dinger finished fourth. Haley finished fifth. Busher finished sixth. Wallace finished eighth. Red Dick finished. Wait a minute. I skipped somebody. Red Maybe Dick he's the British eight. dude in the Charlotte Hotel. Briscoe finished ninth, and Dylan <laughs> finished tenth. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about his wife. Sorry. No, no, Sorry. Listen, Sorry. Don't talk about Red Dick's wife. That would be mean. They make babies. They do. All right, so fantasy this week. Last week, Jamie finally won again. He took a week off from winning, and now he's back. Last week, I had Brad Keselowski, Michael McDowell, and Corey LaJoy. Janet, we did it. We got a fourth place finish. I told you it was a good pick, too. I, I, I took Janet's advice. He could have won. Janet, and look, I got yeah. a, I got Janet, if you would like to send me your advice on all the she picks needs for the pick rest of the all year. three now. <laughs> Next week, Janet, tell Brad who to pick. Yeah, we, I get to pick one driver from the top 10, one from 11th through 20th, and one from 21st to 38th. So, Janet, next week after the Roval, you're going to have to help me out because we got it with LaJoy. But other than that, Jamie had Denny, Elliott, and Larson. I had a total of 57 points. If there wouldn't have been a wreck there, I would have been way better. Yeah, you had a total of 25 points. The lower number wins. Overall, you are winning with 1,268 against my 1,397. I get to pick first because I lost. I'm going to start with... Oh, I hate to do this because it always bites me in the butt. Who are you going to pick? Chase Elliott. He didn't bite me in the butt last week. I know. It's a good pick. Bite me in the butt, I'm sure. And then I'm going to go with... Oh, man. This is a hard one. Let's go with um, Tyler Reddick. And then from 21st... You don't want Martin Truex? (laughs) His luck's got to turn. I mean, he's going to finish in the bottom half of the field, guaranteed, so... Harvick's a last place pick. Yeah, Harvick hasn't done. He ain't done good as a Roval. He hasn't done anything all season. So, well, he came in second and then got moved to third. I go with Michael McDowell. He's a good road racer. 
I mean, he won. Screw me at Dago, but I'm willing to give him another shot. But if you shot. would have picked him for the road course in Indianapolis, you would have won. I don't know. So I'm going to pick him for this one. All right, who you got? Hmm. I'm not going to pick Denny because Denny's not a good road racer. And he points that out quite often. Hmm. Wow. There's not really good picks here. Justin Haley finished good last year. You know, man, I kind of want to pick him. Soros? I don't want to pick him. It's, it's tight. It's close. Soros is tight. I mean, according to that British guy in Charlotte, he might be. Maybe. Depends on how big his strap on was. <laughs> Who are you taking? His wristband. I'm going with sore ass. All right. Sore ass it is. In the bottom, the mid 10. 11 to 20. I'm going to go with, geez, there's not really a. Hmm. Amarillo. Oh, Kyle Larson. Oh, you scared me. All right. Who are you picking from the bo dirty dozen? Mm. Boy. Gibbs? I'm going with Bubba. Hmm. Could work for you. I'm not going with Gibbs. Every time I pick them, if we were doing this in Xfinity last year, it might have been beneficial, but no. We're going to change up our fantasy picks a little bit next season, so it'll be a little different. Okay. We're going to make you pick Ty Dillon or Ty Gibbs every race? No, we're just going to pick one driver, and you can only pick one driver. You can only use the same driver twice the whole season. Dude, that's about how many races there are. Yeah, I know. So that'll work out perfect. Okay. All right, so you got anything else? No. No. No, didn't bring any. Blown your, blown your whole load for the day. Nothing else. <laughs> According to the British guy, you got the squirts. <laughs> not not yet. <laughs> it is a quesadilla Monday night. Quesadilla Monday. All right. Well, thanks to everybody who listens, watches the show, shares us on social media, and tells us tells your friends about us. We greatly appreciate you. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. We're at Car Backwards. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and check out our other videos. Hey, we a uh, big milestone this week. Thousand subscribers on YouTube. On the way to a million, man. On our way to a million. Uh, make sure you go to check us out on Spotify. And if you go do follow us on Spotify, make sure you click the follow button and rate us. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and leave us a review like Brandon did. Send us a DM or you can email us at racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com. That's our email address. At racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com. They come that to pod me. Pod kind of throws it off. Pod for podcast. Why? Didn't you just put a podcast? I don't know. I, I really don't know. But racecarbackwardspod at gmail.com comes to me. I share it with Jamie. Okay. I've tried a lot. That's because I've tried a lot. Only emails I get to it are YouTube comments, notifications. My old employers that were dedicating to this to, they thought they were emailing me on it. Well, now they know. Make sure you check out our new merch store. It's racecarbackwards.com. Or and race, thanks for listening, guys. Or racecarbackwards.threadless.com. Other than that, this has been... Show your respect, bro. Thank you. Hey, I greatly appreciate you guys for listening. So thank you for listening. The M family. And watching. The M family. Yeah, 100%. But this has been episode 78. Other than that, that's all I got for you this week. Jamie, you want to say goodbye? That's for the M family. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. Let's wave together.